Sam and Cup and welcome to another episode here for the Funky Pot and for the MMA Monday, MMA Hour, MMA anything. Uh, you can hear from my voice that I'm slightly, I don't know, knocked, not knocked out, but um, wobbly. <laughs> I know what else I, I feel, I feel quite well actually, it's just my voice is basically gone. So we're we'll keeping all the podcasts this week a little bit shorter, but I still wanted to talk about a few things. And in the MMA hour, MMA Monday, MMA anything, uh, we're, we're talking about the UFC and the lack of promotion. And it's not, maybe that's, that's the wrong term. And we talked about this many times that they don't promote fighters and whatnot. And I'm not in a state right now to actually go on a rant again with my voice, but... <laughs> The way they don't even promote the upcoming pay-per-view. It's like this week on Saturday. It's Volkanovski versus Makachev. Soups. They would call it a super fight in previous times, right? Champion of one weight class versus champion of another weight class. What does the UFC post on the social media channels? Slap fighting. <laughs> It's ridiculous. UFC, take the L, let it go. No one likes it. Everyone hates it. All the comments are just negative. Everybody's hating on it. Just take the L and move on. It's like it's like what Vince McMahon did with like the his 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 football league, the XFL. Didn't work. Cut the loss. Move on. It's bullshit. Sorry. Ah, oh, this this annoys me. And there's Alex Volkanovski, obviously a honorary Thai Thai fighter. Now that he trains a lot in in Phuket here at Bangtao uh, Muay Thai in MMA. But And then, then, I mean, Islam Makachev, he lost, has one, he has one loss on his record. Volkanovski is undefeated uh, as, as a pro, I believe. You could market the, uh, out of that and they're not doing anything. Say what? Even the embedded were a lackluster, like showing Volkanovski going swimming with his daughter, which is nice. But why don't why don't they even try to put this over it's, it's I don't understand they really hate Volkanovski I don't know why but they hate him they, he doesn't get any any much promotion there yeah, it's crazy so that annoys me that there's only slap fighting all the time but no no promotion for an actual super fight I so hope Volkanovski wins by now just just to throw them off and just to have them have him uh Like even more on their their programming, uh, because then he would be like a double champ. So he needs to be on there. Crazy, disrespectful. Also, Co I know that the card isn't great. Coming event this Yair Rodriguez, who I like as a fighter, um, but yeah, Yair Rodriguez versus Josh Emmett is not as exciting. I understand that, but still, I mean, you're just gonna ignore that card and be like, oh yeah, whatever. No, come on. And why do you get? give the airtime to slap fighting it's it's ridiculous okay that, that's the rant for now <laughs> uh, let me know what you think do I exaggerate um, let, let me know and then so many things um, we also have to quickly just talk about how they portrayed um, Fyodor's Fedor's last fight I mean, it was it was obvious that he, he's going to lose it like, to Ryan Bader. He had no no business being in, in the octagon with him, but he won it. So yeah, sure, fine. Um, but that's now the one time per week where I agree with Ariel Helwani. Helwani was like, yeah, do it like pride and have the fighters come out first. I mean, one championship does the, does the same thing, right? So they have the fighters of the main card come out first, come on stage, announce them, uh, quick fireworks, and then we start with the card. That would have been nicer to, to see like Fedor before he gets beaten down on the stage one last time, maybe. Would have been cool with all the, the celebrities or like the, the legends. That would, that would have been nice. This was a bit sad now to say goodbye after he's got beaten. But I mean, at least it wasn't that bad in a sense that he was like all messed up or anything so it's still okay I guess but yeah so that, that could have been a little bit better in my opinion but from a production point of view but okay hey um, it was somewhat decent right um, one championship still in my opinion has struck gold with what they're doing right now the Friday fights they had no three iterations of the Friday fights already they're always from famous Lumpini Stadium here in Bangkok it's like a 
the most famous Muay Thai stadium here in Bangkok, Lumpini. There, there are a few famous ones, like there are two most famous ones are Lumpini Stadium, which is number one. And then the second one might be Ratchadamnan Stadium, which is also quite famous. But Lumpini is like the mecca of Muay Thai. And usually people that go there, they, they, they know their stuff, they know Muay Thai. So if you, have, if you haven't yet, if you, if you like stand-up fighting, they do have MMA fights on there too. Um, but it's mostly a headline by, by stand-up fighting. Muay Thai mostly, kickboxing maybe, but mostly Muay Thai because Lumpini is the Muay Thai mecca, okay? Um, the fans go crazy in there. It's fantastic. It's like, it's like this old school, also gambling flair a little bit. I don't think they encourage gambling if there are one events. Um, but it just has like this, this people are really into it, like getting rowdy and loud and all the things you usually miss at one events, you, you have it at, in the Lumpini Stadium event. I think they struck gold with that. I think they even moved the... Uh, an upcoming Bangkok um, card uh, from one of the pay-per-views to Lumpini Stadium now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, because the atmosphere is awesome in there. It's smaller, obviously, smaller than in the huge impact arena where they usually are. Usually it's like a huge like event venue, but it just feels, even like if you just watch it on YouTube, it just feels so much better. It's, I think that was really smart by one championship. Sometimes I criticize them for this. I have to give them props, which is great. As I said, usually, uh, mostly it's striking on those cards, but they also throw some MMA fights in there. The last one that we saw, for example, was Shannon Wanshin Virachai, the previous Thai prospect, who was like the, the, one of the first Thai MMA fighters they, they threw on the ghost cards and tried to promote him with his ex-girlfriend Rika Ishige, who was like the prospect in the female division, and they both went on losing streaks and like kind of disappeared from, from the schedules and everything. They're also not together anymore. Maybe now they both can find a resurgence who's who knows um rika is doing lots of seminars and stuff around thailand i believe and now shannon uh, virashai seems to be back in in one championship and he won um so congratulations shannon virashai was supposed to win that fight i think but still have to do it so congratulations I saw some some clips before, also him, him putting work in with, with one of the famous boxing coaches here in, in Thailand. So he seems to take it serious again. Didn't look as ripped as, as usual, but we're all getting older, let's be honest. Uh, he won, so let's see where, where this, this takes him from here. I'm not going to review like all the Friday fight not, fight cards now because uh, I assume that you're not familiar with, or most people aren't familiar with any of the fighters or most of the fighters. Uh, but it's definitely worth checking out. It's so the first two fight fight nights, uh, fight cards, Friday fights, sorry, um, were stacked with like famous fighters. But now the last one, I think there weren't that many famous, famous fighters on there. Uh, but they were still fantastic fights. So if you're really just enjoying good fights, mostly stand up, a few M MMA fights, tune into those Friday fights, find them on YouTube. Uh, they're fantastic. It's, it's really entertaining, lo lots of fun to watch. Um, not much dead air in between. Like they, they're really fast paced. Um, it's it's great. So one championship. Uh, congratulations on that. Production is is great. Um, like I said, there's not much talking in between. It's it's awesome. That's what a fight fan wants. It's great to watch on a Friday night or whenever you whenever you watch it. It's it's awesome. So watch the Friday fights. And I'm not sponsored by one championship. I'm not affiliated. And you, if you listen to previous episodes, you know how much I hate on them. Um, very frequently for like their, their scoring system and their judging and whatnot. So and but in this case, um, the judging still same issue, but the events are great. All right, I think that that's it for for this week's um, MMA Monday because, like I said, my voice is just not here as you can clearly hear. Uh, I can feel it's, it's almost gone again. So um, as always, it would be cool if you join a conversation, like, share, subscribe, rate this podcast so more, more MMA and martial arts fans can find us and we can talk about it. Like, and no, oh my God, yeah, do all those things, but I forgot. The legend, Lawrence Kenching, is going to retire his channel. He's going to stop break doing fight breakdown videos. That's actually the most important news this week. This is sad. Lawrence Kenching, like if you don't know, shame on you. Lawrence Kenching fight breakdown videos I think it was, it's Lawrence Kenshin breakdown. It's fantastic. He broke down the fights of everybody. Like, even like not only famous MMA fighters like Izzy and some, but also like even back then when Izzy was still kickboxing. Like, like he and Thai fighters like Sanchai, sure, but also like the old school Thai fighters like, like, like Diesel Leg and, and whatnot. So, like, really, really detailed breakdowns of like even the golden era of Muay Thai. And it's fantastic. And I'm really sad. I, I was. 
I'm not kidding. I was sad when I saw on, on his IG that he announced that he's gonna retire that those breakdown videos. So thank you to to Lawrence Kenting. Um, and I'm just an amateur, but I learned a lot from it, and I I implement a few things or try to at least in training. Uh, so it was awesome. So thank you for your service, sir. It was you know, one of my favorite favorite platform or channels on all the platforms to follow. Um, being at IG, YouTube, and so on. So it, it was fantastic to see. I hope someone steps up and um, fills that void that's going to be left there. But uh, yeah, heads heads up, heads off <laughs> to um, to Lawrence Kenting, the OG in, in, in fight analysis. So thank you for all, all the work. That was fantastic. Um, if you haven't, check out Lawrence Kenting right now. Check it all out because this content is amazing. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for the, for, for joining. Um, I'm going to rest my voice now. As always, stay safe, take care. Don't forget to keep your guard up. Sorry, Cap.